just to put it in perspective what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take off this nd filter right now we are at that negative three ev so exposure is good highlights are a little bit blown out if i come over maybe over here right highlights are looking good uh right over here highlights are looking good sky is nice and blue i'm in focus i am nicely exposed but check this out this is truly blown out this is overexposed so this is what your nd filters do right you can put it in manual mode you get that motion blur you get that natural looking footage your highlights are not blown out everything is retained everything looks great and you are good to go it is here i've been waiting for so long for these bad boys you see that you see that that is something that if you have an osmo pocket 3 you've probably been waiting for your own unless you got lucky and you've gotten your own nd filters yes the joy the small things that bring us joy you know when dji released the osmo pocket 3 they did release accessories but i don't think they were anticipating for people to buy as quickly as it did the osmo pocket 3 is still sold out whether you get the pocket 3 alone or whether you get the creator kit i did purchase the expansion kit and i purchased the ndi filters from dji i had bought those from b h and i actually got the expansion um, adapter and i'll show you guys that a little bit later on in the video but i canceled the nd filters and that's because i saw that polo pro polar pro had their nd filters on their site for the osmo pocket 3. they have the regular nd filters and then they also have the nd filter plus cpls which is what i got we're going to unbox these in a little bit but i actually was super excited because i purchased these with their 20 percent off um pre-order kit that they had their pre-order special that they had so that was a decent discount and then let me sh let me tell you guys a trick shh polo pro don't be mad i left them in my cart for a day because i was thinking about it and then polar pro sent me a 10 percent off additional coupon on top of the 20 percent pre-order so i got these bad boys for 30 percent off uh might be worth a shot if there are some filters and stuff that you've been eyeing from polar pro leave them in your cart and see if you get lucky i do have other nd filters from polar pro for my regular full frame cameras and so quality is great um, fantastic build quality, love them. And I wanted to give these a try. Let's unbox these. Oh, and by the way, you see these boxes there? I have been waiting for months. That's a package from Wandered. And if you follow Wandered, then you probably know what's already in that package. I had signed up for Kickstarter. Be sure to hit the link in the description below or the card. I think the card's gonna show up somewhere over here. I'm gonna be doing an unboxing for that stuff there. If you are a bag lover, like I am, I have entirely too many bags, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button and check out that video once it's released. I'm currently shooting in all auto modes. So that is auto exposure, auto white balance, and auto color profile. 4K30. And when I took a look at what the shutter, shutter speed was for these auto settings, in order for everything to get nice and contrast, your dynamic range, in order for this to work as it is, it had to bring the shutter speed all the way up to one over 1600. And what that means is that then there's not gonna be any motion blur. It's not gonna look natural to the eye. And it's, you know, it's great, but there still is the potential, depending on where you're shooting, that your highlights can be blown out. It is a super bright day. I am now facing the sun directly and it, it can really overexpose your image. It can overexpose your highlights. And sometimes there's things that you can't go back from. And that is exactly why you want your ND filters. So let's take a look now at the ND filters and see what we get with motion blur and what the settings then can be pushed down to.
I threw on the ND128 CPL filter and set it into manual exposure. Still shooting at 4K30, but now we are shooting at that 1 over 60 shutter speed. The ISO, I left it at auto, and the range for ISO, I have it between 50 and 1600 because it is daylight, and the ISO is maintaining around a uh, 150, 160, it's bouncing back and forth. But if we go back now to that motion blur, you should be able to now see the difference between the previous motion blur at 1 over 1600, which was non-existent, to now with the proper shutter speed at 1 over 60, you should be able to tell a big difference. And then also paying attention to my highlights and the images behind me, it's going now to look more natural. You don't have to worry too much about your footage becoming overexposed, you looking overexposed because you are using the ND filter. Again, this is the ND filter at 128. I'm gonna now move over into the ND32 and let's see what that looks like. This is with the ND32 polarized filter on the ISO is at 50 so it is at the lowest so what that tells me is that the ND128 the ISO was a little bit above 100 which is still not too bad that means that the ND128 was just a little bit too strong and it was making my image too dark and that is why the ISO went up over 100. We're now throwing on this ND32. The ISO is at the absolute minimum at 50 ISO. We're still at that same shutter speed of one over 60 shutter speed. We're still shooting at 4K 30. And the EV compensation, that negative EV value is at negative three, which is what I like to keep it at. And if we take a look at the clouds and the sky behind me, everything looks great. I feel like I'm good. I'm in focus. You get some nice dynamic range. This is still the automatic color profile. And if we just stop for a moment, look at the skies behind us. Now it's going to start to get blown out because the sun is literally right there. So it's definitely going to start to get blown out on that end. But if I come back over here this way and let the sun face me, now I'm looking at the EV value and that's where it could get a little bit blown out because I am facing the sun. It is now at even that EV value, but depending on, you know, how much you face the sun and everything else, that's where you can, I might want to throw on that 128 directly behind me. But if we have the sun basically at a 90 degree angle right now, this looks fantastic. This is great footage. I don't have to worry about things getting overexposed, blown out. And I know that when I'm doing my edit in post, everything is gonna look great. The sun is now directly behind me. And so the Pocket 3 is going to do some of, you know, that it, digital processing to try to keep me in um, exposed properly without, you know, blowing out the highlights. There's only so much you can, you know, do. You can see the sun on that side, the sky is still blue. And as we start to go a little bit better, if I block the sun with my body and as we, you know, just move around in a circle, just being able to take note of the image processing using an ND filter and the range that you get out of the Pocket 3, which is fantastic. And to just further continue testing with the ND filters, I did throw on the ND8, and this is now where the ND8 is not strong enough because it is an extremely sunny day. The clouds are, um, you know, nice and bright. The sun is shining. We are looking at um, the EV meter is showing positive one. Depending on the angle that I go to, you can even tell right here, absolutely blown out. And if you do this to your footage, then there's no recovering it where if we, you know, come back over here, things start to level out. But at that point, that's where you would choose a stronger ND filter. And being able to tell which is the one that you need, that's a great test, right? You can kind of maybe start out stronger 
and see your ISO. That's what I did. I started out with a stronger one, see, saw where the ISO was. And you also know that if you have a lower uh, or too low of an ND filter, taking a look at, of course, the ISO because it's going to be at the lowest that it can go. And then the next thing that you want to look at is that EV um, value. And if it's pushing positive numbers, that means that your footage is overexposed, your highlights are blown out, and there's nothing that you can do in post to recover that. That is why everyone should have a pair of ND filters in their kit, regardless of what camera you're shooting with whether it's an Osmo Pocket 3, a drone, a mirrorless camera, full frame, or even your cell phone. Depending on what you're using as your main camera, having ND filters will make sure that you get great looking footage that is exposed every time, all the time. And if you found this video to be useful, if you enjoyed the content, please be sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps the channel grow. It helps for other viewers like yourself to find the content. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace out, y'all. Yeah.